My name is Lila Bashan, and I'm an American uh, Foreign Service Officer with USAID. But all of what we're going to talk today about and everything on my channel are my own personal views. It's nothing official. I'm so lucky to be joined by my friend um, and colleague, Summer Basir Briars. Thank you, Summer, for joining me today. Thank you so much, Lila. It's great to see you and chat with you. Yeah, and Summer, we're, um, I'm here in Armenia and you're in Micronesia. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing in Micronesia? Sure, I'd be happy to. So I have been here almost three months now. Uh, I am working for the U.S. Embassy in Colonia, uh, one of the four states of the Federated States of Micronesia. So I am also a Foreign Service Officer, and I'm working here as the Management Officer. That's great. What do you do as a Management Officer? So as a Management Officer, our primary role um, is to look internally at the embassy to make sure that we're providing the support functions to make the embassy run. So I'm in charge of all the housing, I'm in charge of the vehicles, I'm in charge of the contracts. Um, it's like property management and plus contracting and it be, uh, it's a lot of different roles. Uh, so it can be um, really fun and interesting <laughs> Most days. <laughs> well, as someone who um, is on the receiving end of, of your work at embassies around the world, I really appreciate it. And I know all diplomats do because it can be challenging living so far away from home. So thank you for all that you do, Summer. <laughs> thank you. Um, and so, and this is the role that you have now, but in the Foreign Service, obviously, you have different roles. So um, when you were here in Armenia, you were the human rights officer at the embassy, which I know is a role you really loved. And so I just wonder, how did you um, get into international relations in the first place? And why did you even want to have a career in international relations? Thank you for that question. Um, it is it is interesting. So I grew up in a very small town um, in rural Kansas. Mm. So Foreign service and even international relations was not something that was discussed often. Uh, oh, many people, I had never heard about being a diplomat or I didn't even know too much about what USAID or U.S. embassies were doing, actually. Mm -hmm. um, so what happened is I had just always had a desire to travel, to learn, mm. um, to go see things. I think that's it. I love traveling because... It, it satisfies kind of that sense of curiosity, I think, that I've always had. Um, and then when you travel to a new place, you learn, you, there, it opens a whole other world of curiosity yeah. that you didn't even know existed yeah. before. Uh, when I was young, about 16, I traveled to Barcelona, Spain for the first time by myself to do just uh, two weeks to study abroad. Cool. And that's really the pivotal moment where I decided that I wanted to keep traveling. So after college, um, I graduated uh, with my bachelor's degree in social work. Mm. Um, I still wanted to travel but and, and try to do something good for humanity. So I joined the Peace Corps. Oh, that's great. So, yeah, Peace Corps <laughs> Ukraine. They're there from 2000 to 2002. Huh. Uh, then when I came back to the United States, that's when I decided basically I could do anything because I had lived abroad. I had, you know, the Peace Corps can be um, kind of challenging conditions sometimes. Mm. So, but I loved it. You know, it was a really great growing experience. Um, and then I moved to New York City. Wow. Uh, I got my master's degree there. And then, and what, then was, I decided, what was your master's in? Uh, my master's degree was also in social work. Okay. Um, yep. So I love I love that field. I think there's so much you can do with social work. I think a lot of it um, in social work is just learning to deal with people. You know, being able to talk with people and appreciate people from a variety of cultural backgrounds, yeah. which actually is very important um, in this work in 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 the foreign service. Yeah. So. Um, after I got my master's degree, 
um, I decided, well, actually there was a program called the Presidential Management Fellowship Program. So I applied that uh, in my uh, final degree of my master's program. And as you know, that launched to uh, government-wide. So I actually joined, I started for a few months at the Forest Service, the U.S. Forest Service, and then I found a job in the U.S. Department of State um, that I was very interested in, and it was working on diversity uh, and disability issues oh, within wow. the Department of State. Which is so applicable to kind of like social worker stuff that you had worked on before in your previous career. That's interesting. Yeah, and there are actually um, social workers employed by the U.S. Department of State to work in that social work uh, capacity to work with uh, foreign service officers who've gone through traumatic experiences or, you know, just want some support or talk to people. Uh, That's not my role, of course, but uh, I always think that Someday that might be something I look into. Um, Yep, and so then that's where I learned more about actually going overseas and the Foreign Service. And so um, I I got married. I was like two months pregnant, and I asked my husband. (laughs) I was like, "Mm, I'm going to do this test, and if I pass, will you quit your job and let's go, you know, travel around the world? He said. Okay, <laughs> he'd never been out of the U.S. before we met. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. Um, and then here we are, yeah. And so you've been, you've served in the Philippines, Cape Verde, Armenia, and now Micronesia. So the first time your husband left the country was to get on a plane to to go to the Philippines to live. Well, I took him on a few side trips oh. before that, but... Okay. The first major one. <laughs> to warm him up. And I'll put in two plugs. Um, I was also a presidential management fellow, and it's a great way to get your foot into the door for government service and to have a lot of learning experiences. And then also the U.S. Forest Service, USFS, actually has international programs. They're here in Armenia working on um, some environmental programs and some ecotourism programs and some disaster risk reduction programs. So... You never know what will get you abroad, but we're so lucky that you joined the State Department so that I could serve with you in Armenia. (laughs) Um, And so your your career obviously was not straightforward, you know, starting in social work, doing Peace Corps, going to USFS, going to the State Department as a civil servant, then joining the Foreign Service. Um, And now you have this luxury of looking back over the last 15, 20 years to see that path. But what advice would you give to someone who's who's back um, in their college days or just starting out or wanting to switch their career? Uh, It's a very, very great question. So, again, just where I grew up and Mm. kind of just my my family, what my mother really wanted me to do, it was occupational therapy. So I kind of set off down that path. And it was fine, and of course, it was a great profession. But I kind of knew that there was something off that didn't sit a hundred percent with me. So then, what I really did was talk to a career counselor at my college, oh. and he pointed me. He took we did like a personality test, and then he just pointed me to a whole list of things that I might want to look into. And in that case, social work was on there. Um, but then uh, other, other, other things. So I think maybe, um, just taking an expansive, uh, view, taking a step back, like, um, thinking about, even though this is your one world view that you're coming from, there's such a possibility out there. Um, and, and sometimes you haven't even thought, you don't even know about the possibilities until you run into somebody who, who can introduce you to them. Right. Right. That happened to me. I was at a youth retreat. Um, and I met Robert Mueller, who was a UN civil servant who worked on peace and conflict resolution. So when I was in high school, I didn't know that was a thing. And that's what I got my master's in. So yeah, you never know where these nuggets of wisdom that are going to unleash your future career come from. Right, right. That's exactly right. And I think having as many different experiences, I fully 100% support going abroad in some way or another. 
um, that it just opens up, opens up more possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, it's so true. That's so true. Well, so Summer, what is something that you wish you had known when you were starting out on your career? I think that's a great question, um, and I like to reflect on that from time to time. But something that has resonated with me is what Michelle Obama recently said. Um, I'm not even sure where. She was in some interview, but she said that um, somebody asked her, did you ever feel intimidated? Mm. And said something along the lines of, I sat at the most powerful tables with the most powerful people, and um, I've realized something like, they're no smarter than anybody yeah. else, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, like I said before, I grew up in a very small town. Um, then the, through the Peace Corps, that launched me in a different direction. Mm -hmm. I ended up going to uh, Columbia University, which yeah. is a you know a prestigious university, um, and I was extremely intimidated yeah. uh, when I started there um, because it's, it has that reputation. It is, it's a great university and, and very elite, uh, but I was very nervous. Um, and then when I joined the Foreign Service, also has a reputation for being very yeah. elite and a, and a great organization, and I was also very nervous. I think sometimes that I definitely have that self-doubt. Mm -hmm. Do I deserve to be here? Did I trick my way into getting here? Mm -hmm. um, someday they're going to find out I don't deserve to be here. So, uh, But now I'm almost 42 years old and I realize that, you know, everybody's experiences are valuable. And, yeah. and, and I look back now and I, and I, to young people, I say, Try do do your best. Your your ideas are as valid and as important as anybody else around the table, even if it's dubbed a very prestigious or 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 you're walking into a room and you're nervous about it. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that anybody else's opinions are more valid or more important than yours. It's so true. I I've had that experience too, and finally after you know two decades faking it till you become it, I realized. <laughs> Oh, they might sound more confident and they might sound like, of course, they know all the answers, but they don't actually know anything more. And I'm just as worthy of being here and having my voice heard. So I totally appreciate that so much. Yeah. 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 It's something I had um, taken to heart more when I was young. Mm. And I think it's great advice. It's imposter yeah. syndrome. That's They've put a name on it recently where you don't feel like you really belong to be there. So, no, that's awesome. Yep. And then, Summer, yep. you've um, you've traveled all over the world, lived all over the world. What's one of the, not the number one favorite, it's not, um, you know, I realize children have like, oh, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite movie? But when you become an adult, you don't necessarily have number one favorites of things. But what's one of your favorite places that you've been able to live in or travel to? Um. I appreciate the question, and I appreciate the way you phrase the question. <laughs> <laughs> I've lived in and and have had the opportunity to visit some of the most amazing cities on the earth. And uh, again, from you know a very small town background, I know how lucky I am to have had those experiences. You know, I love Saint Petersburg, mm. uh, amazing. I love Italy. I love Vienna. But um, one of the most unique places I've ever been. Uh, and I traveled there with my husband and two very small children at the time. Um, I think my daughter was two and my son was maybe six months. We were living in Cabo Verde, or Cape Verde. It's in uh, Africa. And there uh, is another island in this, this string of islands in that nation. It's called Mayu. Mayu. It was about a 10-minute flight, a very quick flight. Um, but it is one of those places that I would not have imagined exists if I hadn't been there. Oh, wow. There's about 7,000 people that live on this island. It's run by one generator. There's like a few stores and a few um, houses and maybe like two or three hotels, two restaurants. The most beautiful beaches that you would never fully perceive. My husband, because I was with the kids and it was like 2 a.m., but my husband got to see, you know, um, turtle hatching oh. eggs. 
Um, and you know, it was, it, it, I don't even know. I think it doesn't even show up on most maps. Wow. wow. <laughs> this, this island called Mayu, wow. but it was one of those moments where I was just like, this is an, I love my life for the fact that I get to see places that are, are completely unique. So yeah, that one amazing. stands out as a unique place. <laughs> and I love that. That's something you definitely get living somewhere instead of traveling. Traveling, a lot of times you get to go to like the big city or maybe one or two other smaller cities. But actually living somewhere, you do end up exploring in such a a deeper way than you you would if you were just there for a week or two so that's so cool and so you referenced your your little kids um do you have any advice for raising children abroad or insight into how you have a family while gallivanting around the world <laughs> well um so far it's it's definitely just go for it take them it's fine you know there's a lot of um, concern, and I always say this too. These, I'm 41 now, but I think that this generation has been one of the first to grow up raising kids with the internet there all the time. Yeah. So you, I think I think it's possible for parents to really overthink it and and make themselves really nervous. Mm-hmm. Um, but. I think also it's a good thing for kids to get out there and travel. Mm-hmm. I've also always had this experience where um, in the foreign service I've lived, you know, usually in the off off the beaten track kind of places. <laughs> um, and so sometimes there'll be, you know, young backpackers, full backpacks full of things and, you know, they look very concerned <laughs> and they're, you know, <laughs> but then, you know, my little, like, two-year-old is living there, and everything's fine, you know, yeah. so, yeah. so they, we, we have, they're adaptable, and, um, you know, there's people that live everywhere on yeah. this planet, you know, people survive, and it's, it's, um, I think it's, it's good, and it's good for my kids to have grown up with the diversity of the world that they are experiencing. It's one of the reasons I joined the Foreign Service is because I wanted my kids to learn about other places, to speak other languages, um, which is to some degree or not. They're not really, but they could could learn more languages. But I like um, to think that it's going into their brains and somehow creating, (laughs) you know, the foundation for future learning. That's what I think. At least they have knowledge that people do speak in in, yeah. in many different ways and they interact in different ways. So now they are now nine and seven, and and I'm hopeful that that will be um, it will be good for them <laughs> growing up. I love that. There was one thing I wanted to say, Lila, yeah. that um, maybe one of the most I think interesting things about my career so far. And one thing that I am uh, most proud of uh, in the way that I feel like I was able to serve our country. So when I was in the Philippines, uh, I was a consular officer. Mm. Because in the Foreign Service, you have to do, uh, in the State Department, you have to do different uh, jobs at the beginning. You have to do a consular tour. So I was a consular officer in the Philippines. Um, unfortunately, during that time when I was there, there was an American woman who had, uh, was kidnapped, um, in the South of the Philippines with her 14 year old son. So these are both American citizens. Um, because of my social work background, um, the ambassador, uh, um, talked to me and a few other officers uh, because she was released from captivity from these um, this terrorist organization, but her son was not. Oh so the ambassador asked us to stay with her basically around the clock for the first week of mm. her release mm. so that we could be there to talk with her and help her process um, uh, while wow. the other agencies assisted her in in other ways but we were there just as a support role but I have to tell you it was one of the most impactful things I've ever done to be around this this mother who had just been released Mm -hmm. from several months uh at a terrorist camp she was obviously going through a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder 
um, and, you know, physical healing, and emotional healing, and just a state of limbo while waiting for her son. Um, but it was really, really an impactful thing. Um, and I was really grateful that I was able to be there with her, with the other people on that team, uh, to learn about her situation and to try to help her through that time. Wow. And eventually, uh, her son was released oh, and wow. they were, uh, Rejoice. Thank goodness. Well, you know, that speaks to the humanity of <clears throat> our profession and other professions you end up having in international relations is, is just that ability to connect at a human level goes such a long way. And it's so important. That's amazing. One of the best yeah. things about this life is getting to meet amazing people doing amazing things like you. <laughs> so. Like you. <laughs> <laughs> oh man well and i know that um you know it's saturday morning here in armenia and it's friday night there in micronesia and i know you you have plans but but before you go to trivia night at the embassy and i hope you win um do you have any other final words of wisdom you'd like to share uh i i commend your listeners for finding you i think that my <laughs> words of advice would be Listen to Lila. You're so I think you have never, <laughs> you offer the best advice. You've never uh, led me astray. Um, so I, I think that you, Lila, are an incredible person doing incredible oh. things, yeah. doing incredible work that you make. Uh, you're an inspiration to me with the way that you do your work and you have your family uh, as well. So I think best advice I had is, Listen to Lila. <laughs> you're so funny. Well, and I didn't even pay you to say that, Summer. Well, you're so sweet. Thank you. I think you're amazing. And um, thanks, everyone, listening. Um, of course, listen to Summer's advice and leave a comment or, or let me know if you have a question. And please subscribe to my page and know that you're on your way. 